entrepreneur, brand strategist, author, Kelly Lundberg. Nice to be here. Thanks Welcome for Welcome to me. the show. That's good. I'm excited to hear what we're going to talk about today. Well, I feel like um, I feel like this is deja vu. It was only a few days ago I was on your podcast. Yeah, how the tables have turned. Exactly. <laughs> and I just get to sit and relax now and go, ask away. No, no, no. Well, you, you get to relax. I was going to say yeah, when yeah. we were talking about it, I, I was saying how, uh, how much I just much prefer to be the guest than the host, but... Uh, um, I don't know. You, you get used to both sides of the table, don't you? Yeah, but there is that there is that feeling of when you're the guest that that you can relax a little bit more because you're not leading it. Whereas I always find this podcast host, it's like, right, how do I link that conversation into the next conversation? And where you've all, kind of always got to be that step ahead. Well, I'm sure you'll be the perfect guest that does all the linking for me. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> let's see. Right, let's set the scene because we're gonna we're gonna talk personal branding. I, I was saying to you before we started, my mm. audience is uh, entrepreneurs, want to be entrepreneurs, and just I guess people who who want to move their life forward and you know get more out of today than they got out of yesterday. Yeah. Um, and you know, I am a massive advocate of of personal brand. Uh, and for me, you've got to build that personal brand wherever you are in the ladder of your business and wherever you are at the stage of your life. Uh, but that's me saying as a layman, you're the expert. Tell yeah. us, what is a personal brand and why does everybody need one? Well, I think it's gone back to even the foundations of getting people to understand we've all got a personal brand. Because people go, well, I'm not in business, so I don't have a brand. And the truth is, everyone's got a personal brand. And what is a personal brand? Ultimately, in my eyes, it's how you make someone feel when they come into contact with something that you say or do. So that could be for the first time in person. That could be for the first time on LinkedIn and in Instagram. It could be a referral. But it's that how do you make them feel? And it's the perception. How do they perceive you? How does that other person perceive you? The amalgamation of both your online and offline persona. Because I think all people automatically assume personal brand. Oh, it's social media. And I'm, that's it's just one tiny part of it. It's every action that you show up and how people remember you. I think you, you've hit the nail on the head for me where, where so many people get it wrong and think that they don't need it, or I say don't need. Don't have. They don't have mm. a personal brand uh, because obviously that, that is, is the big mistake. But because, because of the social media world, the influencer world, you know, to me, people mistakenly just associate personal brand and influencer as, as one, and the, one and the same. Yeah, yeah. Like you say, you know, social media is, is a part of it, but there is, you know, there's a massive difference to being an influencer and having a personal brand. And personal brand existed long before, you know, long before the internet existed, long before social media, even long before TV, TV and, 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 and anything else. And I always say that, you know, the biggest personal brand out there was probably Jesus. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, he, he, was, he was having to, to write it in stones. But... Um, you know, every, every, everybody has one, every, everybody needs one. Uh, and, and I guess for me, what people really need to understand is how do I, uh, let's say, craft and articulate my brand? And, and, and how does that get me from where I am now to where I want to be in the future? I always say the first place to start is do an audit. What actually is out there online about you? And what do people think about you? So when I work with clients, we do it two ways. We look online, Google images, we look at articles, is there things that you don't like out there? But then equally, what do your friends, family, colleagues, what do they think of you? And we start to then create a bit of an impression as to, okay, well, actually, I want to be perceived like this, but they think I'm like this. What do I need to do to change that? So I think the strategy piece of understanding, I want to change, or do I need to, or where do I need to look to enhance it? So that for me is always the very beginning place of where you start. And then it's putting in conscious decisions about what do you want to achieve with your personal brand? Because it's different for everyone, because it's personal. So for some people, it might be, I want to become MD within the next 10 years or five years. For other people, it might be, I need to launch my business and I need visibility and I need credibility. So I need people to know about me. For others, it's, do you know what? I want to use my voice to mentor others and just support people. One of our clients at the moment is in his 60s, has been very successful in business and he's happy with that, but he's, he's still got time and energy and knowledge within him and he's like I want to use my personal brand for good to help others 
So I think there's many different reasons as to where and how your strategy might be. So mine many years ago was getting my first job and, and being that person that stands out against everyone else. That was my personal brand that got the job. To getting now booked as a keynote speaker on stage, it's your personal brand. So I think you've got to really think about, first of all, where is it? And then where do you want to go with it? When a client first comes to you, do you find that they already know and appreciate what a personal brand is and why they need one, hence why they've come to you? Or do you actually have to do a selling job on the benefit of, of brand as well? No, I think when they've signed up with me, they they know. They're like, I'm ready and I'm all in. I've worked with a couple of people where it's been more pushed upon them by the organisation. It doesn't work. So, so how do people find you to come and work with you? Is that through your personal brand? Absolutely. And what's quite interesting is if I go and do a talk and I say, you know, how did you find out about today's event? They'll go through you. Not through my business. I have a business, but it's through the, the, the personal piece where people resonate with it. So whether that's LinkedIn, whether that's Instagram, whether that's, oh, I saw you on so-and-so's page, or I met a friend of a friend, or I saw you speaking at an event five years ago, and I've always followed you. So I think it's very much the personal brand piece. And I, I really believe that your visibility is your responsibility. So if that's in an organization, and you're an employee, or if that's you owning a business, you can't expect people to just stumble across you on the internet. You've got to make a journalist's life easy. You've got to make that buyer's life easy. And how are you doing that? Hey, Matt here, just interrupting myself quickly to say, thank you for listening to No Bollocks. But did you also know, I've got another podcast, Stripping Off with Matt Haycox. Very different. No Bollocks is the quick daily business tactics that you need, but Stripping Off We just do it once a week. We go deep, deep, deep with a CEO, with a celebrity, with an athlete, with just an international inspiring character. We find out what makes them tick. We find out how they got to where they got to. And we find out how you can learn and benefit from them too. So jump on over to Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, wherever you listen to your content. And I'll see you on a future episode. Let's just rewind to that audit thing for a minute where you you talk about that, uh, you know, you sit down and you you look online or, you you know, you you see you see what articles are being written about you, what what your social media says, etc. I mean, what if there's zero? I mean, what what, what if we talk about somebody who's who's starting from scratch for whatever reason, you know, maybe they're young at the beginning of the career or maybe they've just managed to get to where they've gotten to without having any presence Uh, and there's generally nothing out there about them. And you say, okay, well, I've kind of got a blank, blank canvas with you. Yeah. So how, how do you work between, let's say, image crafting and authenticity? Okay, so I think when you're looking at that, and you'd be surprised actually how many people, when I do events and I get them to audit and they're like, nothing's come up. And they're in their 30s, they're in their 40s, and even in their 50s. So it does happen. But I actually quite like that because it's a blank canvas. So the first thing that I always want to do with clients is get them to understand their, who they are. A lot of people don't know who they are. What am I saying? They know in their heads what they want to say or how they want to come across, but they just can't articulate it. And then what happens is if they go to a networking event they tell people what is they do, but then their message online is completely different. So that consistency piece leans into authenticity. We've got to be um, who we say we are. There's no point in creating something online and then people meet you and go, hang on a minute, that's not the, the same person. So I, I would say that the consistency and the message is where we help so many people. And you'd be surprised, people in marketing, branding, they go, I can do it for other businesses, but I can't do it for myself. I cannot... Um, articulate who I am, who I help, and what's my message all about. So that's the first place that we would start with someone who's completely maybe got nothing on it. And from there, you're like, okay, so who is my target audience? Okay, my target audience is... um, Who's your target audience, for example? Uh, Business owners, SME business owners. Okay, so your target audience is SME business owners. So then we're looking at, okay, let's create a brand that attracts that kind of audience that's true to you. Okay, so if it's male, female, both, but then it's, okay, looking at angles of going, okay, where would those business owners be that I can reach them? Is there a place that you can go and speak where maybe 
you'll find those business owners, maybe, um, you know, British business groups or anything like that. Or maybe you could look at business magazines or publications and go, do you know what? I want to be an Arabian business or I want to do this because that's where my target audience is. And that's how you then start to create what I call a digital footprint, not a social media footprint because they're very different. Mm -hmm. And that's where you want to find the... Um, the, the 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 heaviness, the heavyweight in your personal brand is what's out there. You are who Google says you are. And that's the piece that I remember years ago, I was going to work with a coach and, and she was 25K US to work with her. And I was like, mm, I, I think she can get me the results. I'm going to do a bit of my own brand research. There was nothing. Oh, six views on YouTube, a very small Instagram account. And I'm like, hang on a minute. I'm not about to invest. They might be able to get the job, but that representation for me perception i'm not going to pay for it talk to me a bit about difference between let's say digital footprint and social footprint and not so much difference because i guess that's that's quite apparent but where where the value comes in in a lot of these um these digital footprint things like you said talk about arabian business or entrepreneur magazine and yeah. these things and when people go in these magazines or when people get these pieces of presence, do you think that the the articles in themselves actually drive any traffic or drive any business to the to the um, person with a personal brand, or do you just think it's doing it's doing a good job of digital footprint? Both. I think there's a space for both, and it depends what publication it is. Um, you know, I think oh, I was invited to speak on Dubai Eye, and through that, got two opportunities through the bank of people that heard me on that. So that wasn't a publication, but it was still a media outlet, and there were still opportunities. So I think it's less about that magazine article got me three sales. It, it, PR doesn't work like that. Yeah. But it is very much, that led me to that opportunity. That's led me to there. Oh, so-and-so read about me there. And that's where that paid job or that sale came from or speaking up or whatever it is. So 100%. And I think the the piece is your personal brand evolves. So you want to have this, this journey. And for me, the one thing that I always say to clients is make sure you own your own domain name. Yeah. Or own a domain name that you can then start putting all these um, aspects of your your assets. These are your personal brand assets. An article here, a, a speaking gig here that you've got photographs. That's your assets, and you put that into your personal branded website. That then starts to build the credibility and the trust of why someone would either want to work with you, pay the money that they want, they they do pay to work with you, and it's just that trust accelerator. I think one of the things you just said there is key as well in that, you know, one opportunity leads to the next opportunity leads to the next. Yeah. And, you know, I've always been a massive advocate for, you know, for, for saying yes to, you know, to any kind of media opportunity, to, you know, to any kind of social content, because it's it's impossible to, you know, to put a, a calculated, tangible ROI on yeah, it. Yeah, it's so true. But it's kind of, you know, like doing this podcast leads to meeting that person. Meeting that person creates some social content. You know, but t TV scout, Fight, is looking for people with a social media profile like that looks like X. They find that say yes to TV opportunity. Lead comes from TV opportunity, and you can you can never you can never plan it that far out in advance, and you and you, you can't put a timeline on it, and you can't even say if it would ever happen. But I just think you know you, you've just got to embrace every every one of these opportunities in media, yeah. um, and 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 just and just go go to every one of them with your arms wide open. But I think there's also that piece of going, what media do I want to be in? We, and that's why we always start with who, who is your audience mm -hmm. so that you can actually tangibly think about where do I want to go? And that's when it comes to kind of that first question that you were asking about crafting that personal brand. It's got to come personally from you. What are the things that you want to work on this year that you feel are going to enhance your personal brand? All last year... I focused on writing my book because I felt that that was really going to help my um, personal brand visibility and credibility if I've got a book in personal branding. The last book I wrote was over a decade ago. I was so going to say, out of date. You, you've got two books, haven't you? Yeah, and it was out of date. So then it was like, bring up speed. So that was a big goal for last year. Um, this year, my big goal is to focus on speaking engagements because now I've got the book. I want to reach more people. The easiest way to reach more people is one to many. How do you do that? Either through 
podcast opportunities, radio or speaking events. And that's where I can impact. So that's what this year's goal. Five years ago, it was I want to do a TEDx talk because I really felt that that would an, add um, weight and ROI into my personal brand. And where, where does your journey begin? I, mean, I, I guess, you know, you've been building a personal brand and clearly understanding personal brand before the words personal brand were particularly before used. I knew it, yeah. You know? uh, I, mean, I mean, did you understand what you were doing then or were you just, let's say, being an intelligent marketeer that knew that if you dressed, you know, dressed yourself like this, presented yourself like that, it would lead to opportunities? Or did you really understand you know, how, how to craft a brand. I think there was been that there's a, when I've looked back, cause obviously when you can join the dots, when you, you look backwards. And I think that to me more recently has been really key. So I actually had my very first website back in 1998 what, as in a Kelly website? Yes. And at the time, I wanted to be a TV presenter. So I was uh, working overseas. I worked with a tour operator. I had um, a lot of TV programs coming out, doing programs while I was there. Someone had said, we'll film you a showreel for it. And a friend of mine said, I'm going to put this on a website so that you can promote it to um, broadcasting houses, to pr production studios. And that, I think, was my first ever introduction to oh, wow, I don't need to live in London. I can be living in the Canary Islands, which is where I was. Send the VHS to them, but then they could look at my website. So that I look at that now going, because a website for me is, is so important. I think that stems from, you know, more than 25 years ago, why it's so important, because it was the ability to be able to connect with people in, even in those days. So I had personal branded pictures before personal branded pictures were even a thing back in um, 1998. But the defining moment where I actively when I'm going to separate my business brand and my personal brand and Kelly Loomberg is going to become the overarching umbrella for all my business assets that I end up doing was back in 2009. Now, I had got an opportunity with a big luxury brand. So just kind of set the scene. Um, I originally moved to the Middle East as cabin crew with Emirates. I did two and a half years, loved it, hung up my wings and started the Middle East's first personal shopping and styling agency. I was loved fashion, loved helping people. So combined them both. Um, so I did that for 15 years. And I guess that was probably the first introduction to actually brand image and how you come across and styling people for them. So Harvey Nichols contacted me to host an event. And in those days, even now, but when I was wearing my styling hat, like that's your dream, you know, to go and get your luxury brands to ask you to come and speak at an event. So they said to me, can you send me your logo, your biography and some pictures? So no problem. Pictures tick, bio tick, logo tick. And the marketing department said, I'm afraid we can't use this. And I immediately thought maybe it's not fashion-y enough or maybe it's not high resolution and they went oh no no it's a business we can't be seen to be promoting a business we can promote you but not your business we can talk about you coming into store and hosting an event but not your business and that was just the biggest light bulb moment for me going that makes complete sense why would other companies promote other companies you come in and you hire an expert which in turn grows your business I got clients out of that but it was Kelly so they said, can you send me your biography for Kelly? And can you send me your logo for Kelly? I was like, yeah, can you just give me a couple of days? And when you were, when you were Kelly, the, the style guru business owner, yeah. were, you, were you building a brand around that as well? Yeah, 100%. So that was very much, I think, because that's my first book then. So that's when I realized I'm going and talking about entrepreneurship, not styling. That didn't fit in my styling business. So the book, um, keynote speaker, the celebrity stylist, because I'd worked with a number of celebrities and royalty by then, hosting events, that all went under the Kelly brand. And then I had stylists and my own business under the styling agency. But the thing that I think is really important, and probably especially for your listeners as well, is that if at some point, and this was always a goal of mine, I wanted to sell my business. I don't know why, I just maybe saw it one day that I thought this would be really cool. So before I even started my business in 2005, I was, I want to sell it. Don't know when, don't know how, but I just want to sell it. And I think the understanding of going, your personal brand always goes with you, but you can start and sell loads of businesses. You can move countries, that brand will always go with you, that business might not. And that for me made me understand, no, your personal brand 
is really, really important. So when I sold my styling agency, because I managed to tick that off the list, um, I had three years operating under my personal brand till I really managed to solidify what are the next steps for Kelly and my business. I mean, so like someone like yourself, when you transition from from one business to another, yeah. I mean, two very very different businesses, or you know, when when anyone is either moving businesses or maybe just they gen, genuinely change as a person, you know, I don't know, maybe maybe they were all about fitness and now they're all about something else. Yeah. You know, are there are there issues in transitioning with the personal brand? You know, do do, do you advocate for people almost, let's say? <laughs> disappearing the old brand and starting the new or, or is it okay to be you know to be transparent that you know I was this I'm on a journey and I'm now that I think that goes back to your authenticity piece I think people are are with you on that journey I still get messages from people that say I've followed you since your very early styling days and I love that because they've been with me for 10 years but it's okay to evolve we all change we don't stay in the same job forever we move on and I think in my transition, it's it's been quite organic because style is still part of the personal brands, but I knew that there was so much more that I could help people with other than just styling. But I actually think it's really okay. Do you know what? I was in corporate and I've decided I want to change and I want to go and do this and this is my reason for doing it. And that's where then we help clients with their origin story as to why are you doing this? Why would people want to buy from you? Um, what is it that makes you different? And connecting those dots people buy from people they always have done and they always will do so make that personable and I think that's all part of humanizing your business humanizing your brand why do you do it and when you've got a CEO and, yeah. and, and whether whether this is let's say a CEO who owns his own business or he's just a you know a CEO and CEO within a big brand if you've got to concentrate an amount of resource on let's say personal brand versus business brand mm -hmm. how how much would you advocate concentrating on each and and is and is there still let's say is there still benefit in working on the business brand as well or should you do it all as a personal brand and any spill off that naturally comes to the business brand will, will peter in that direction well, i guess like, giving us some context for, for people listening if we, if we look at tesla mm. and elon musk uh you know for for for, for someone who are arguably doesn't need a personal brand he you must put more effort into personal brand than, than, than anyone else in the world. But that massively powerful personal brand he's got then rubs off onto Tesla, which, I mean, I know at a point in time, and I think maybe even still now, doesn't do any advertising whatsoever. But, you know, it out, outsells every other car, every other, um, well, like for like car brand and, and, and many of the, the more traditional car brands, you know, dozens to one yeah. when they're spending fortunes on branding, fortunes on, um, on on, on advertising purely off the back of the power of his personal brand mm. well I think that there's I think when you're also at that level you've got a team around you um, and I think when you've got a team around you it's 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 like a business your personal brand is a business at the end of the day like your business brand so I don't think it's 30% here 70% here 20 40 I think it's do what you feel you can do but your team will help you do that but i guess what i'm saying is, 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 is team aside and you know whether or not you've got the resource to concentrate you know as as a ceo of of a, a big brand sh should you actually still do work on that on that business's brand itself or would you advocate for concentrating on everything on the personal brand itself and and the business brand will get will get nat natural benefit. It does. I mean, I think for sure, but I, I really do think that there's teams that take care of mm -hmm. the business brand, but the personal brand will automatically spill into the business. And I think when I'm having sort of sales calls with people that are maybe at the start of their journey, they're struggling to get their head around, but I want to grow my business. I go, yeah, but if you work on your personal brand to get more visibility and more people know who you are, through that your business is going to grow, you know? So it's getting them to understand that your business will grow through your personal brand. Tell me about your books. 
like my books. About your books. So obviously, I, I am a, I'm a proud owner of the uh, the more recent book. I should have book. one, another one with me here. Yeah. <laughs> DC'd the Lemon. Yes. Uh, what, what was the first book? So the first book was um, Dubai Entrepreneurs. It was called Success in the City. Um, I kind of a bit of a play on Sex in the City yeah. in, the, in the day. It was 2008. Nine when I wrote the book, 2008 when I started it. And I was just so fascinated by the amount of entrepreneurs or business, people that just came to the Middle East and decided, you know what, I'm going to start a business and I'm going to do it from scratch and it's totally new and I've no idea what I'm doing. I was so inspired by that. I was like, I want to write about them. Um, so I kind of spoke to 20 entrepreneurs and kind of had this big grand idea that success in the city would be this book that would go all around the world and it would feature entrepreneurs in every city and and it got as far as Dubai like I loved it Lloyds Bank sponsored it actually so it was something that it was a great marketing effort again uh, um, collaborating with established brands it was great for my personal brands Um, and I got to be an author by the time I was 30 which was great to send a book back to my school in Edinburgh where my English teacher was like you're never going to pass higher English. And I'm like, well, I've not only passed higher English, but here's a copy of my book. Well, um, when you were writing it or when you decided to write it, did you did you just want to write a book at that point because you want you wanted to write the book or did you realise that it would be, you know, one of the most powerful business cards that you could you could have? Yeah, I didn't know that at that time. And it wasn't until someone said, why don't you have author? And I was like, author? I'm an author. Like, I didn't think about that, adding that to LinkedIn. I've been in LinkedIn that long. Um, I didn't think about adding that. And that, you know, that book was, a, you know, it was around for sort of, I don't know, two or three years. Um, and it's, it's it, it, I think that the thing is now where I went with this book was I was ready to dive so much deeper into all the things that I've learned in business over the last kind of 15, 20 years. And that's what DC The Lemon is. But it really comes together in storytelling. So the concept of DC The Lemon is literally DC in the lemon. It was something that my Scottish granny used to do every morning. And when I asked her, like, granny, why do you do that? And she was like, well, no one likes pips floating around their hot water with lemon. And I kind of never understood that until I drank hot water with lemon. And I'm like, no one wants this. And and whether that's a, a mojito or a gin and tonic, like no one likes pips in their straws. No one likes pips when they drink. But the idea of that became a metaphor. So when I went into the fashion and style industry, it's the small things, like tiny. DC in the lemon is a really small thing, but it makes a difference. And that's the same with your outfit. It's the same with how you show up when you meet someone for the first time. The small things, the first impressions can really either put someone off or win them over. So that's the metaphor and the, the, the name is kind of behind the book is how do you DC the lemon? Every single day, how do you DC the lemon? And for me, that's your personal brand. How are you showing up? Are you doing things consistently? Small things lead to big actions. And I think as entrepreneurs, they often think that, you know, okay, they need one big thing is going to get them the $100,000 a month or whatever it is that their goal is that they want to um, bring in. But it's not. It's the accumulation of doing lots of things you're in this it's the compound effect the compound effect of your personal brand the compound effect of showing up the compound effect of how you are every single day is the success of your business the success of your career and ultimately the metaphor is dc than the lemon I mean, you know, we, we talk about books, podcasts, social media profiles, speaking opportunities, all, all of these different things. And I couldn't be more with you in that you, know, you need to be doing all of them. And, you know, like I said, you can never plan for which one's going to be the best one, but it's just an accumulation. It, it, it's, it's a compound. But for, I guess, for someone who's, whether it's resource short, budget short, or, or just wants to wants to dip the toe, toe in the water what what do you think if someone had to pick one thing to you know, to, to give them some personal branding presence and, and start the journey along the personal brand what, what one thing should they pick oh i would honestly say um, get better at communication so public speaking i really think the amount of clients that i work with that are afraid scared um lack confidence and when I say public speaking I don't mean oh go and find a stage and speak to 600 people I mean going on a podcast that goal of speaking one to many 
is the way that you're going to increase your visibility. So how can you do that? So being a guest on someone's podcast rather than hosting your own is a great place to start. Um, it could be hosting your own event. Like a lot of people go, well, I can't host my own event. Who, you, who am I going to invite? Create an ad. Put it out there. If five people come up, do you think 50 people attended my very first event? No, two people did. And then two people became four and four became eight. And I have practiced and practiced and practiced so many times that it becomes second nature. And then you bring in storytelling. So for me, um, if, what are you not very good at? Get better at that. And for most people, it is public speaking. And for an entrepreneur, being able to tell stories that aren't necessarily always about your business, but bring it back to who you are in your business can be the best lead magnet that you could possibly ask for because it leans into your authenticity. I think it makes it so much easier as well. You know, I, I mean, I think one of the biggest barriers people have when it comes to, let's say, making content and and and, and cr creating any of the assets that, that go around personal brand is, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know what to do. You know, what should I show people? What should I tell people? I, I've got, a, you know, I've got a mental block, a writer's block, but you know, they they, they don't realise that what they're doing all day every day anyway is what people you know is what people want to see is what people want to understand and just you know just just talking about what you've been up to just you know sh sharing that experience sharing that problem you know not 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 only is it what everybody wants anyway it makes your life so much easier in creating that content absolutely and and communication whether it's sales whether it's um, helping someone that whole piece for me, I, I, I just, I, I don't know what school education is like nowadays, but I definitely think I wish there had been that opportunity for me at school to have got better at that because I'd be further ahead now, you know. Um, but, you know, watching TEDx talks, how do people present themselves? I still buy courses on public speaking. What's one thing I can learn from this person? How can I incorporate that into it? Storytelling is really big at the moment for um, client journeys on how do they tell great stories in less than three minutes but manage to get a point across that either entertains inspires or um entertains inspires there's one more that's off the, the, the tip of my tongue educates yeah educates yeah um to get them to do something and and whatever that is is for me it goes back to what's my purpose why do i do what i do is to inspire five people a day to take action that's it so if i can do that uh, more by speaking then I go to bed and go, I'll sleep better at night. So what is the next step in the evolving of brand, Kelly? Very good question. I think I'd been such a big focus on um, the book and the audio book. How long did it take you to write the book? So it took me... It took me... The January was when I decided it. I had already sort of 20,000 words, maybe about eight months but I gave up every weekend, except for holidays. So right. pretty much every Sunday. Well, literally every, every Sunday, all day writing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And some days I'd do 500 words. And other days I'd be like, wow, I've done 1,600 words. And other days I'd get 3,000. Um, so that was a really big goal. And then also audio for me, because I'd already published a book. So the, the goal of publishing a book wasn't as new as it was the first time around. But for me recording my own audio book because that's how I consume content is through audio that was a really big uh, you know achievement um, earlier this year and was something that I found much harder than I thought it was going to be and you'd think reading your own words would actually be quite easy and the amount of trip ups and I can write words, but I didn't know I could not pronounce a lot of words in the, that audio book. It's that Scottish accent. <laughs> I know. I was always on YouTube going, how do you pronounce this? Or how do you pronounce this to get it right? Um, so what's next for me? So I've got really clear um, goals with regards to business growth, where we're growing our online program, again, to be able to reach more people, to support them with their personal brand. So we've just started a big ad campaign on that. And that's new to me as well investing in ads everything that I've done up till now has been organic um and but I also know to scale a business 
you can't just rely on word of mouth in, 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 in an environment which, let's face it, the UAE is pretty small in comparison. And is your client base mainly UAE-based people, yeah. people who come to you face-to-face? Probably say maybe 70% is UAE, all online. So I have an online business. My calls are done on Zoom. Okay, you don't Do mean. in-person events in Dubai, in-person events in London. Um, but my, my business core is, is online. So I have... Um, uh, on, uh, an online program which is a group I have one to one also online and then keynote speaking and that takes me a lot of traveling places as well so really the business growth in the online space is huge for me just now because I haven't invested in that so that's where a huge part of my marketing is going at the moment and um, keynote speaking that's the bit that I am developing at the moment and got my goals and the companies that I want to speak at and the people and the uh, the, the, where I can give the support to help them grow their personal brand because that has their ripple effect. If I can help them, then they can help their teams. Or I help them in their business, then they can reach more clients. Well, I'll have to get you into my team so you can uh, you can you can talk talk, talk, to them, talk to them about it because uh, you know it's I think it's like one of those things when uh, when you, you, a parent tries to tell the kids something that, that nobody nobody wants to listen, do they? And I and I, know I I drum on about personal branding to my guys all all, all the time, but uh, I think I think I think they probably look at me glazed over like a like a boring dad. Love to, love to, love to. Thanks so much. Well, listen, and for anybody listening, obviously we're going to put some notes on the show notes and things, but how, how can they come and track you down? Perfect. So kellylumbergofficial.com is where they can find everything about me. And just a note on that, uh, Kelly Lumberg Official, and I talk a lot about people buying their domain names and making sure that your domain name your name is a .com because that's the one that's most globally recognised. And when I tried to buy my domain name at the Harvey Nichols point where they asked me yeah. kelly Lundberg back in 2009 dot com was gone oh really yeah who is I, she well interestingly i managed to track down who owned the domain name and i begged the guy who owned it to sell it to me in 2009 because i said you know i'm working on building my business blah, blah 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 and he refused and i really wanted to dislike him because he was refusing to sell me it and then he told me why and he said I'm afraid I've bought it for my daughter. She's just been born and I want her to have her branded name. And I was like, oh, that's such a nice thing to do. <laughs> and I wish that my mum and dad had bought my domain name. They are not techie. They probably still wouldn't know what a domain name is. Um, so I actually went under another name with another ending. I don't want to confuse people. It was a disaster. When I went to LA, when I was in London, people just added the M, added the dot code. So it was, um, I went Kelly Lundberg official dot, because it was the dot com. So that was a bit of a rebrand in 2017. You should just change your name. Yeah. Ka- Ka- Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I love Kelly Lumber. Well, now I'm, I'm married and everyone's going, are you changing your name? I'm like, you're kidding. How <laughs> I've much invested I've years in this. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. How much have you spent on my rebrand of Kelly Lumber? Absolutely not. Um, so yeah, kellylumbergofficial.com is where you'll find me. Kelly official on Instagram. The story about um, relaunching my own uh, new um, Instagram page and LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. I, I post four or five times a week on LinkedIn. So yeah. I really enjoy that platform. Platform. Perfect. Well, listen, Kelly, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for all your advice. And I am still looking forward to reading DC the Lemon. <laughs> My pleasure. See you, man. Thank you.